is more important than the commerce here. And anytime a band puts their career at mortal danger for the art, I support them. I think it's slightly different. I think um, these bands start to make this style of music. They started to become more extravagant, longer tracks, more conceptual. And it was happening at a time when people were have, you know, buying stereos and they had they wanted experience in their living room and they wanted to go on that journey. And and they just started selling more and more. And I think yes must have assumed, God, if if we can get this even bigger, you know, we can sell more. And that's the tra trajectory that um they're on close to the edge is the risk that's the one where they they don't know what they're doing and then they're thinking now we know we, we we've got it nailed and they're they're showing off they're 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 taking all these ideas that they've developed and they're they're doing them to the max but the label was willing to let them do whatever they wanted to do and the spirit of the 70s was such that uh you know thick as a brick and a passion play from jethro Tull both hit number one in the US. They both had one song on them, cut across two <laughs> sides. So the time yeah. and the spirit, it will never be replicated again, where bands could do this yeah. crazy music and sell millions and millions of copies. Now, if you compare it with albums that come out in the same year, there's two absolute monsters, Tubular Bells and Dark Side of the Moon, two of the biggest selling albums in history and albums that changed the music industry fundamentally. And I think, yes, we're trying to do something similar to that. I don't think they succeeded in the way Pink Floyd or Mike Oldfield did. And I think when you look at some of the other progressive rock bands, think of Jethro Tull, who had done Thick as a Brick, everybody loved it. And then Passion Play came out and that got a bit, bit of a bashing from the critics as well. And, and I think the bashing was more from the critics than it was from the fans. I'm sure Yes fans were just loving the fact that they brought out this big double album. And I think they weren't taking a risk they were thinking that they were doing something that was commercial because this stuff was selling. Tales from Topographic Oceans, which is a double album that came up 50 years ago. Are you familiar with that album? Yes, they're a huge you know, influence on us. I'm a big, big fan. A lot of very prominent prog rock luminaries have also professed their love for Tales from Topographic Oceans, including Roina Stolt from The Flower Kings, Andy Tillerson from The Tangent, and even Stephen Wilson has proclaimed it to be his favorite Yes album, calling it hardcore Yes. It just hits me emotionally, like by, you know, especially on side four with, you know, the, that great bass by Chris Squire and the ending with John's vocals. Really, my introduction to Prague was through my dad. He's was a big fan of this music. And Yes is one of his top favorite bands, one of the first ones that he showed me when he was introducing me to Prague. And so it was something I latched on to pretty quickly and really loved. And I know that this is my dad's favorite Yes album. So he was excited to show this one to me because it is so near and dear to my dad's heart. It kind of is to mine as well. You know, he talks about how it's like, you know, means a lot to him because of the the journey it takes you on. It's very adventurous and, and it, sparks his imagination he says sometimes when he can't go to sleep he'll like think about the 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 music and he'll like play it in his head he like knows it so well he can like pretty much reproduce it just in his head as he's trying to go to sleep and we'll play through the different album sides and so it's it's a really great uh exploration a 13 year old kid putting headphones on lying down on the sofa listening to tales from topographic oceans is probably looking at that album cover the whole time you know reading the lyric sheet that is the beauty of yes taking you to a whole new place a whole new universe one of the very first videos i did when i started the youtube channel the prog corner was uh uh, my love letter to Tales from Topographic Oceans. But you know what? It didn't always start that way. I heard Fragile first. Then, of course, I went to the Yes album and Close to the Edge. I got Yes songs. Somehow I jumped ahead to Relayer. Never again will we see major labels with those sort of budgets to be able to put a band in a room, you know, studio for six months and make an album with that subject matter, with those production values. It, it's an incredible thing. And you either love it or you hate it. I got tails, I was all excited, and I didn't like it. <laughs> Having uh, lived with this record now for 
14, 15 months, I still find the middle section difficult. Honestly, it took me years and hundreds of listens to really appreciate uh, the greatness of it. And at this point now, I, I can really honestly say it's my favorite album of all time by any band, any genre, any era. You asked me, will this LP be around in 50 years time? Uh, I think not. Uh, it sounds rather pessimistic, and I hope I'm wrong, by the way. I suspect 50 years' time, people might still be talking about the Beatles and Bob Dylan, but probably very little else. Well, you hear that Yes just uh, sold the publishing or something like that. Yeah, not the publishing, outright. Great news in terms of uh, the legacy of the band. It makes it so much easier for any movie studio or advertising agency that, that wants to use the material. It, it mm -hmm. opens up the floodgates. Ten years ago, I would have said that at its 100th anniversary, it probably would have been a long forgotten relic. But with the advent of uh, the internet and everything that uh, streaming services actually do to put an entire band's catalog in front of people of a certain age, it does almost ensure that 50 years from now, there are going to be a, you know, a large segment of people enjoying this kind of music. And uh, I think modern technology is the driving reason why, you know, finding dad's old dusty vinyl in the attic probably wouldn't preserve this music. As a result, I think the future looks extremely bright, even though right now rock music's having a little bit of a difficult time commercially. I think over the long haul, uh, great music like Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, Brahms, Stravinsky, yes, Genesis, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer will indeed stand the test of time. Absolutely. Absolutely.